it's Karina, your virtual health coach. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about one simple tip, one simple concept that can help you lose weight, take control of your blood sugar levels, take control of your energy levels, and overall help to improve your health. So most of us know that we should avoid sugar or keep our sugar intake low if we want to lose weight, control blood sugar levels, etc. But what a lot of us don't realize is that even foods that are not sweet are still going to be danger zone for your waistline and your blood sugar metabolism. So in this video, I'm going to show you a chart uh, of some different foods and how they fall on what's called the glycemic index. Now the glycemic index is just a way of uh, quantifying how much of a blood sugar spike you get from certain foods. Now the reason that this is so important is that when we spike our blood sugar levels or our blood glucose, we release insulin. Now, insulin is this hormone that is very essential for helping to regulate our blood sugar, but it's not like insulin is a good thing. Now, it's something we can't live without, but in terms of your waistline, you need to understand that insulin is the fat storing hormone. And when your insulin levels are high, your body is in fat storage mode. And no matter how much you work out, your body is storing fat, not burning fat. So the secret or the tip is to help keep your insulin levels low. And in so doing, you're going to prevent weight gain. You're going to keep your body burning fat, metabolizing fat. Uh, and this is also going to be very effective for helping to uh, prevent things like diabetes too. Um, and overall, once we control our insulin levels, we'll also have improved energy and things like that as well. So when insulin is flowing through your bloodstream, your body is storing fat. And so these foods <laughs> are going to be the foods that cause the release of insulin or that cause a blood sugar spike. And so here we can see in this list, uh, we've kind of got them broken down. So the higher the number, the higher the glycemic index or the higher the blood sugar spike you get from eating the food. So right here at the very top, we have fruit roll-ups, which probably isn't a big surprise. Now, just for reference, I want to point out that table sugar is about halfway down here on my board at 65. So actually, higher glycemic than table sugar are your Skittles, your white bread, your potato chips, corn flakes, and even a baked potato. So... I know I say this a lot in my videos and I wanted to make this video to hopefully uh, just really drive home the point and make it really clear that these foods, baked potatoes, cornflakes, potato chips, and white bread are all just as dangerous for your waistline and your blood sugar as eating table sugar or eating a fruit roll up. So as we look at this chart, we can also notice um, that some of our fruits are rather high glycemic. And so watermelon is actually the highest, and so I put that on here. Uh, but you'll notice that even the highest glycemic fruit is still not as bad for you as potato chips, cornflakes, baked potatoes, and fruit roll-ups. Just saying. Um, also, when we eat fruit, we get all kinds of nutrients uh, that we don't get from any of these things. So even though we do get somewhat of a blood sugar spike, we also get a whole lot of nutrients. Fruit is a very healthful thing to eat. Now again, if you're someone who's very cautious with your blood sugar levels or you have a lot of type 2 diabetes uh, in your family that you're trying to prevent, uh, then you want to probably avoid those real high glycemic fruits as well. Moving down the chart, we have uh, Coca-Cola, Hershey bars, uh, then we have apples down here at 38. So I just wanted to kind of show that the fruits uh, are going to vary uh, between, you know, approximately 72. Then they get lower. The lowest GI fruit is going to be cherries down here at 22. Now, what's also cool is that dark chocolate 
is way down here. Uh, so here's the Hershey bar at 55, dark chocolate at 22. So let's talk about why that is. When we consider the factors that go into this glycemic index number, um, of course, part of the equation is the amount of sugar that is contained in the food. But then another consideration is how much fiber and fat are also included in the food. So when you look, for instance, at the glycemic index of a Snickers bar, uh, it actually is lower than the glycemic index of a Hershey bar. And it's because of the addition of those nuts to the Snickers bar that reduce the glycemic index. So kind of the take home message for you is that you can reduce the glycemic load, which is like the glycemic index of all the things put together into a meal. And then the uh, combined glycemic indices are known as the glycemic load. So you can reduce glycemic load by uh, adding sources of fiber and sources of healthy fat when you consume uh, sugar. So dark chocolate is lower glycemic than milk chocolate, uh, primarily because it has lower sugar, right? And so typically you get more of that strong chocolatey taste. Sometimes uh, really dark chocolate can even be slightly bitter. But if you're someone who is really used to eating milk chocolate, I encourage you to just start easing your way into darker and darker chocolates. If you immediately go to a 70 or 80% dark, you're probably not going to find it very palatable. Uh, I'm at the point now where I like my chocolate, the darker, the better. Um, but if you're a milk chocolate eater, just start gradually moving yourself over to darker chocolate. Another thing I just have to add is that if you eat raw chocolate, you actually get a huge amount of health benefits. There are a lot of minerals contained in the raw cacao bean, uh, and there's also a great amount of fiber if you actually were to eat the cacao nib um, or raw cacao bean. So when you look at the ingredient label on your chocolate bar, oftentimes what you'll see is cocoa processed with alkali. That's the bad stuff, okay? You're not getting any nutritional benefits from that. Uh, once it turns into cocoa, that means it's processed. So what you wanna look for on the label is cacao. Uh, sometimes it'll even say raw cacao, or maybe it'll say cacao nibs, uh, but that is such an important thing to look for. And in my opinion, uh, raw chocolate satisfies my chocolate craving even more. So I kind of consider it a double win, that it also gives you health benefits too. So now let's look back at our chart again. And the simple tip that I'm talking about in this video is not that you need to memorize this chart, but let's look at the chart and let's just make some really simple observations that are going to help guide us in making healthier eating decisions. Um, so number one, first thing that we can notice is that your natural foods, your whole foods, vegetables, legumes, nuts, uh, and even fruits, depending on the fruit, um, are gonna be your extremely low glycemic foods. Again, cherries ranking down here at 22. Uh, most of our vegetables, even including summer squash, which is kind of a sweet vegetable, uh, ranks in around 15. So I just kind of lumped them all together here. There is a little bit of variation between the vegetables, uh, but it's pretty negligible when we're talking about such a low, low, low glycemic index. Uh, nuts down here as well. Avocado doesn't even have a number. It's so low glycemic that it doesn't even register on the glycemic index. It means it doesn't spike your insulin levels uh, a significant amount at all. So if we can just try to eat from this lower part of the board, uh, that right there is going to completely change our body and it's gonna help us take control of our weight. So again, your fruits, your vegetables, your natural foods. Another simple observation we can make is that the processed foods are really high glycemic. Your corn flakes, your potato chips, your white bread, your Skittles, your Coca-Cola, your Hershey bars. So you could memorize this thing and if you wanted to, but 
<laughs> but I think it's a lot easier to just make a simple statement like processed foods are generally very high glycemic and should be avoided for weight loss and health. So another thing that I want to point out here is the difference between eating fruits and eating things that are made from fruits. Now, granted, a fruit roll-up <laughs> contains a lot of added sugar and stuff like that as well. I actually don't have fruit juice on the board, but it's worth noting that where apples fall at a 38, apple juice would fall somewhere up here with a much higher glycemic index. So when we remove the fiber from the fruit, that is going to increase the glycemic index. So it's always going to be preferable to eat the actual fruit, the apples or the watermelon, than to consume the fruit juice. So at this point, I just want to clarify that the glycemic index is not just based on the amount of sugar in a food, but how quickly the food breaks down or how quickly that food you eat results in a spike of your blood sugar or a release of insulin. So fruit roll-ups are going to have a faster release of sugar into your bloodstream than watermelon, Skittles, or Coca-Cola. So another thing to consider and another way to use the glycemic index to our advantage is to keep in mind that the lower glycemic foods Okay, the lower numbers are foods that take longer to break down. And for this reason, they're going to help satisfy hunger longer. So if you eat a baked potato or potato chips or white bread or something like that, that food is metabolized very quickly and the sugars in that food very quickly enter the bloodstream. At this point, we get that blood sugar spike that I've talked about in several different videos. This is where insulin is released to try and bring that blood sugar level back down. So, uh, from the perspective of satisfying your hunger longer, you wanna opt for those lower glycemic foods because they take longer for your body to metabolize. Um, and for the uh, purpose of trying to keep our insulin levels low because insulin is that fat storage hormone that we wanna try and keep minimal in, you know, flowing through our body. Uh, again, we wanna choose those lower glycemic foods. So I really hope that this video helped to give you uh, some really simple guidelines to help you take control of your health, take control of your weight. Uh, there's so much information out there about nutrition and weight loss, and I know it can be really, really confusing. So I hope that this video has uh, cleared up a little bit of that confusion for you and really given you something that you can use to start getting healthier right now. If you'd like to learn more about me and my health coaching practice, you can visit me online at KarinaRachel.com. I hope that you'll leave your questions, comments, or requests for future videos down below in the comments area. Thank you again for watching, and I look forward to seeing you again in the next video.